Dr. Zelenko became a household name when he developed his world-famous Zelenko protocol. To make sure that everybody had access to his immune-boosting formula, he created Z-Stack, my family's immune-boosting supplement of choice. Along with Z-Detox, Z-Flu, and Z-Shield, Z-Stack has helped countless families stay healthy and protected. With every purchase of Dr. Zelenko's products, you also support the Zelenko Freedom Foundation in their tireless work to promote and reinstate medical freedom for all. Click the link down below, use coupon code INSPIRE to save and protect your family today. Hey, Inspired Tribe, my fellow freedom lovers, it's John Nolan here. Thank you so much for tuning in to another Inspired Conversation today with a first-time guest, a wonderful spirit that we reunited with, and we're going to get into that during our conversation. Healer, author, astrologer, light warrior, freedom fighter. There's so many ways to describe this man. George Lewis, it's an honor to have you today. Thank you so much for joining us. John, it's really wonderful to be here, to be part, to be part of your, your team and with you sharing frequency together. This is an amazing time to be alive and to be able to co-create. Oh, I couldn't agree more, George. It's a blessing uh, to have you. And it, it was a blessing to reconnect with you. And when I say that is for so many of us, it feels that when we get together and meet, it's like, oh, we already know each other. We, we have known each other for a very long time. We're being reunited. And in our case, with Christine and you and I and uh, Dr. Christian Northrup, whom you're close friends with as well and whom you often travel with, we were reunited here in the Nashville area a few months ago uh, during the Reawaken America event that has brought a lot of people together here. And um, we felt an instant connection, not just on many topics, but spiritually, vibrationally. So it's our honor today to introduce you and your great work to the Inspire Tribe and also to talk about current events and how the bigger picture is. So I, it's so impressive to read your life story, where life has taken you, what you've done. Um, but perhaps I'll ask with the question that I often ask is, when do you feel your awakening started? What, what triggered that in your life and how did that unfold? Yeah, it's a very good question. I think for me, it's been drip, drip, drip throughout my life, uh, drip, drip towards just remembrance. Uh, certainly, 2014 2015 were the big years because i got a download and i get these weird downloads and everyone of course thinks i'm crazy i saw mr trump win about 18 months before he did and i saw brexit about a year and a half before it happened and i didn't really understand what i was witnessing but when 2016 did happen that's when the penny dropped for me and i think my awakening just sped up exponentially and as it sped up my world unraveled because Mr. F Mr. Popular, you know, sociable, um, suddenly became um, not 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 acceptable for many people, from family to friends, um, and it obviously culminated in a, in a divorce two and a half years ago, which of course your wife profoundly helped me on certain things. That's how I felt our friendship came came to, you know really was sped up very quickly she helped me with some trauma surrounding one of my children and i th i think the thing is what what i've been through really is is very archetypal of what many people who begin to really question the world in which we've inhabited and when we do question that and when we question it a little bit ahead of our network our friends our family it's profoundly lonely until more people start to question it and ultimately this is this is the great awakening. The great reset begets the great awakening, meaning uh, there will come a time on this planet where everyone will think wholly individually and, individu and separately, but ultimately collectively, that we are entering a new frequency, a new potentiality for human civilization. And, and isn't it quite interesting? This is expressed in almost all belief systems, almost all stories, almost all cultures have the theme and, and this is also something that repeats over long cycles. But uh, what, it, what, it, what was so interesting when uh, we had those many conversations over dinner and, uh, you know, with beautiful friends was that you have a, a quite unique perspective, not just because of uh, your capabilities, not just because of the astrology, but also because for many uh, events that are happening, you're kind of looking from the inside out, not from the outside into so many you were born uh, in, in, you know, in, in Great Britain and you moved in, 
you know, the high society cycles. You later moved in high society cycles in the United States. And when you say Mr. Trump, he's not someone that you just know from the screen. He's someone you've met personally. So there's a very much of an inside look. And you told me, you know, a lot of times it's really me looking back and connecting the dots with the with everything I know now. I can much more uh, see what has happened while I was in it. How was that for you growing up, especially now looking back and seeing all these truths unfold in the world? Um, what's your perspective on that? I think the biggest thing for me to really get my head around being British and the, from the culture and the class that I came from is the monarchy. It is a subject, even in Britain, uh, that I cannot bring up with many people. And, you know, the last thing I want to do is offend people to such a degree, especially family members who, who will think I'm really attacking them. Uh, th there is, you know, I grew up in a, in a very privileged situation and I was at school with people, you know, from royal family members to people at the, seat, at the top of the elite structure. And this was just my way. That was the world in which I inhabited. But I never, never felt uh, part of it. I think from the early age, it just didn't make sense to me. I didn't ever externally criticize it. I didn't understand it. Or maybe I did and I didn't want anything to do with it. It was the elitism, the snobbishness, the the disconnect from actually from heart, the disconnect. I mean, the British, of course, Britain's a Capricorn country. So it's incredibly um, structured. If you think of it in the archetype of Capricorn, um, not only is it the devil card, of course, in the tarot, but more than that, uh, more meaningfully than that, it's organization, it's structure, it's discipline. And um, in the United States as a child, for all its it perceived issues and perversions, which are really coming from Europe, actually, when we start to look at the globalist agenda, um, America represented the heart. Isn't it interesting that the United States is a cancer country? And of course, we get its knowledge through the birth chart of the nation state. The United States was born with a son in cancer, July 4th, 1776. The United Kingdom gets its, its birth date from the act of union between Great Britain and Wales and Scotland. Uh, I'm sorry, the United Kingdom actually of Northern Ireland, etc. cetera. Um, and it, it, it's to be, and that's a Capricorn country, it's strict. It's organized. And so for me, there was something missing, a, far, a lack of the heart, a lack of some emotional connection, some spiritual connection that always disturbed me. And um, I'm beginning to understand why now. I'm beginning to understand how the matrix has played out. And Britain has so many wonderful qualities. The people who inhabit Britain, fantastic. But they aren't allowed to express themselves because the whole doct doctrinal educational system is so pervasive. And that is, come, that is tumbling down. The, we, as you rightly say, we are coming out of the age of Pisces, which is the age of delusion at the low integrated frequency. And we're entering into the age of Aquarius, at the high integrated frequency. It is going to be the individual celebrated, venerated within the collective consciousness. It's going to be time travel. It's going to be pure, radical freedom. It's actually, you said this before we, we hit the record button, you said it's quite astonishing how astrology is often so literal and so uh, spot on. And when you use that language, it's also interesting that people that have no clue about astrology experience the same things and, uh, and just in different words. They would describe it in different words, but everything is connected. Everything, um, and we're starting to realize this as a, as, a, as a society, as a human family, we really are connected. Um, your journey has taken you not just, you know, uh, over Europe and, and the United States where you are, where you're living now, but um, also to the Middle East, a very different culture, different approach to life. I believe actually where uh, this is where your the journey of astrology for you has started, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. I journeyed. I mean, I, I was living in Oman for a number of years, Kuwait, all over the Arabian Peninsula. And there was one time when I was, I spent about six weeks living with the Al Rashidi tribe, which was a nomadic tribe based in Saudi Arabia and Kuwait. And we were journeying across the desert with the camels. And I obviously had my amazing cameras with me and I started to photograph the night sky. And I think you've seen some of those photographs of, you know, it's just unbelievable when you see the entire canopy of the sky 360 in the sense of stars rising on the horizon, something we don't really see even here in, 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 in the mountains of North Carolina, because of the mountains, you don't see the horizon. You either have to be at sea in the middle of nowhere, or you have to be in, in the great desert of the empty quarter or the Sahara to witness that. And, you know, for me, the astronomy, which is where it started, 
beget, be, uh, creates the astrology. Astronomy is left brain. It shows you the data. It tells you where the stars are, the placements. The astrology tells you the meaning. It's a bit like the corpus callosum. You have to have the activation of the left and the right hemispheres of the brain to be complete. So astronomy and astrology are great bedfellows. They work together. And that's where, again, the penny began to drop in 2009, 2010, 2012 where I was just amazed at the beauty of the desert. And then these beautiful souls, yes, all wearing dish dashes, uh, wearing their Arab garb, and the, and the women, yes, um, often covered with the, 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 the niqab, or you know, the, the, the veil. But there was something very sensual, there was something very beautiful about the people. And I always was trying to get on, under the skin and sense uh, who these people were. And they're all human, and they all have their peculiar cultures as we do. But it it was it was it was very much a mature a maturation period for me. I began to see the world in a, in in a way that has really helped me since. So that was a that was a pivotal point for me. Speaking of the Middle East, and because it it is something in our cultural sphere we don't we don't hear much about it unless there's a terrorist attack or there's some country that's getting nuclear weapons that the West thinks it shouldn't, whatever. But we really, when we talk about our cultural perception of the Great Awakening of all these things. We talk about our culture sphere, the ones that we have access to. What about the Middle Eastern sphere? Do you feel that there is a, a similar sense of awakening going on there as well? And could you even see it back then, 15, 16 years ago or 14 years ago? I think it's a very good question. It's very layered that because let's take Saudi Arabia. It's, you know, the lid has been kept on that country hugely. I mean, the, in, in the past, the, any, 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 any nature of dissent would have been wiped out incredibly harshly. But with the current leader, and again, you know, his relationship with um, 45, it's, to me, it's very telling. I mean, when President uh, Trump uh, went to Saudi Arabia in, in 2017, uh, 2018, I mean, he was met, uh, he gave a, he, he was given a, a salutation um, and a reception like no other. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I would say if I have one skill set, I can read symbols and I can read the why behind the why, what's going on behind the scenes. You know, again, that's maybe a good thing growing up in Britain is I'm able to sort of try and perceive truth behind all the symbols. And the Middle East, I think it, it, there's a huge potential there. They have a, lo a, a big youth and they're bursting ready to learn. Um, but it has to be done gradually, otherwise the whole system would fall apart. I mean, I do think there is, this is the dance between Uranus, which is freedom, and Saturn, which is constriction. It's always got to be this dance. And I think this is part of the Great Awakening, is what we're witnessing globally, is we can't have too quick into it, and we can't have too slow into it. It's really got to be this. And now you and I have discussed this privately before. It, it's a dance, and it's very, very al alchemical. So I think the Middle East is, is, is rearing to go like the rest of the world, like Brazil, like BRICS, I mean, India. Do we hear about it? No, of course not, because the mainstream media has an agenda, and we know that too. It is what it is. Um, what is what you and I have discussed and, and in, in the circles, what we discuss, and what I love about it is we don't necessarily look at the players in the public arena through the good or bad lens, there's a bigger perspective on this, right? We've discussed this just yesterday night. We said, you know, let's look at the players that are appearing on the world stage and see how do they help with bringing truth, even if it's through bad acts, but how do they help? Because everything, as you say, has a symbolic meaning. And this age, I call it the manifestation of truth, period, where the truth cannot be longer hidden. So it just comes out whether... Uh, consciously or subconsciously. And so we see all these players appear on the world stage. We see a reshuffling of events. And um, people say, oh, that's a good guy. That's a bad guy. I say, well, hold on a minute. There's much more to view here. What is that person saying? What is being said about them? What topics are connected to them? And, and one very uh, current player that has just entered. Oh, there it is. There it is. The dog you were talking about. Beautiful. One very current appearance on the world stage, certainly on the United States stage, is Bobby Kennedy Jr., Robert Kennedy Jr., and we talked about him quite a lot. Um, and you said, you know, with him, the astrology is so spot on, it's, 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 it's quite funny, actually. 
So can you speak a little bit on the broader subject of truth and how it is coming up through good and bad people, if we want to categorize, and specifically, how do you view this uh, and you know re-entering of the Kennedy name into the highest office or bid for the highest office? Yeah, I think this is a great question. I mean, uh, at the end of the day, everyone wants to put everyone else into a box because it's easier, because then you have a judgment and you can move on. And I mean, I remember countless people saying to me when the timeline shifted in 2016, which is connected to the Mayan prophecy of 2012, many people said to me in 2017, 2018, why can't you just be a Republican, George? Why, why do you have to support something that is so, I'm sorry about the dogs. <laughs> That's fine. That, that, is, that is so, so, you know, different. Why can't you go into one box, Democrat or Republican? And I would say to them constantly, this is the point. This is the hard graft. The whole system is corrupt. And I will support anyone who can show us a way out of this current cancerous, dark system. And that's why people like us come together. There's no more elephant in the room. The elephant in the room, and it doesn't matter whether it's your pro or the vaccines, whatever, at the end of the day, we're, we're on, a, on, a, on, a, on a route to truth because we believe in humanity. And so, and so for me, RFK Jr. is another way to peel the spiritual onion. He is another person, you know, he's known as the great environmentalist. That's his thing. And he comes from an ancient democratic lineage. And yet he's going to pull more people over out of the polarity. Elon Musk has done it in his own way, you know, with Twitter. Uh, Miss, Mr. Trump can only get a certain segment of the population. Others are so programmed to just hate orange man bad, orange man bad. And so it's not really about anymore who is actually it's never been about putting someone on the pedestal. The real great awakening is bringing radical power back to we the people, which is us decentralized, able to create our own world freely and honestly. And so true leadership is going to show us how to do that rather than the old fashioned guruship. So RFK Jr., I mean, his chart is very fascinating because literally he announced his candidacy as Pluto went over his son. Well, uh, it, it literally was around about a, a two-month two window. Pluto travels very slowly, 248-year um, rotation, and Pluto went over his son when he decided to, to stand up and, and announce his candidacy. And whether, you know, he's going to end up running uh, – fulfilling this run is another thing because i think this is a, me a, a movie playing out i think there's so much that we don't know and that's the whole point is keeping everyone guessing on both sides but what's the main thrust is the awakening meaning to avert a civil war to get enough human beings conscious again out of the programmed matrix yes the matrix is a movie but really it's a documentary for us to become aware of our power and how we've been limited so whether it's rfk jr who's amazing you know whether it's mr desantis you know and then we see the schism between him and trump for me for me this is theater i could be wrong but i feel some of it's theater because it's designed to awaken more and more segments of the population what is interesting about this period for me if you look at these um, currently most discussed characters, like you said, Trump, DeSantis, now Kennedy, um, they, they are really a very similar archetype, like you uh, said earlier. And I believe for people like like you and me and, and um, Christine, we are, uh, we are longing actually for wisdom to return to the public you know, discussion to return into the public awareness for wisdom to come back. But so oftentimes I'm reminded that it's gradual. Like you say, everything must develop gradually. So these characters are kind of like they're beating the drum and they're, they're quite, you know, um, they're quite loud. They're quite bigger than life figures because that's how you awaken people from the slumber is you gotta, you gotta have something provocative in your face. You gotta have something different in your face. And that's why I said the good and bad lens doesn't really apply here. It's really what are they representing? And uh, I, I want to quickly ask you about your personal experiences because you were you were coming from the Middle East and then moving into the uh, you know high society cycles of of New York City and where where you spend a lot of time and where you got to meet some of these characters that we see on the screens. And I'm always astonished at your 
fine-tuned intuition because it goes way beyond the words that are being said, the headlines. There's something deeper there. So your perception, for example, of Trump was very counter to the, the, the society you were moving in, right? All of a sudden you were the persona non grata because you disagreed. Yes. But there was a reason why you disagreed. And you said, you know, my personal experience simply didn't match up with the media, uh, 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 you know, the media headlines. So how how was that for you? How was that experience? Well, it was, I mean, quite frankly, it was deeply lonely at one point, but I wouldn't be here on your channel if, if I hadn't gone through it. I, and, 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 and if you had met me, even three years ago, I mean, certainly before the pandemic, I, I, I was only half baked, and that's being generous. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I, I think, and, and of course, you know, you and your wife have witnessed some of the transformation of me just in the last year, and, and the grief that I've gone through, of course, I'm not saying it's easy birthing. I mean, uh, Zach Bush, who I've known, who I've known of, obviously, for a while, we all have, but he's only really recently come onto my radar, due to some friends who now work with him closely. And uh, he uses the analogy of the caterpillar. Not only are we the caterpillar, and we've actually got to get ready for the cocoon in order for the chrysalis to be uh, broken out of and, and to be reborn. But actually, the caterpillar loses his head in the process. So symbolically, we've got to get out of our head and into our heart very seriously. That's powerful. And, and, and so for me, when I was you know, in New York and London before, you know, I have totally lost all those connections. I mean, most of those people... Uh, they, they they just won't have anything to do with me. And and actually, it's made me stronger. I, I've always been very sensitive. You know, I do have a lot of planets in Pisces, even if I am an Aries. But it has made me strong because I know this is why I'm here. And it is like you, like Christine, like Dr. Northrop, like many of us. We're here to shine light on truth because at the end of the day, without it, there's no civilization. There's no humanity. There's no, there's no friendship and there's certainly no family. And we know the agenda. The agenda is not only depopulation, but the rest is enslavement and for the government to own everything. It, it, they, the family is not sacrosanct. This is demonic. And, 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 and you know, it's irrespective of how I'm going to live my life. I know what truth is. And, and family is front of center on planet Earth, on planet Terra, uh, because the parental polarity of male archetype, female archetype, is absolutely suzerain. It's absolutely at the center of what a soul in human flesh needs to experience this reality. And so I will support that as opposed to some interference and deviation and distortion of it, which is really what the agenda has always been, but now it's out in the open. It's naked, it's for us to see, and that's part of the Great Awakening. Tom, Dick and Harry down at the pub now can pretty much get a sense of what the agenda is, where the past, hey, you're a conspiracy. You know, poor David Icke for the last 40 years. No, actually- Ethel at the like, checkout. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he always says, Ethel at the checkout. That's what David yeah. Icke, that's yeah. his Tom, Dick and Harry analogy. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're putting it so eloquently and at the same time, it's such a grounded thing. Uh, the world is now groomed. It's being groomed to this 2030 date, right? To this um, pivotal moment that nobody really knows why it is so pivotal. There's a lot of things that are pointing to it um, on many different spheres, but the World Economic Forum, the UN, and all its uh, sub-organizations are all marching towards 2030 and they want their big transformations, the digitization, the uh, complete, uh, you know, uh, losing of all privacy, everything centralized, all that should be done by 2030. What is happening in the stars that, um, you know, can support monumental mm -hmm. transformations? Because if it can support a transformation to a dystopian, it also holds the potential energetically to help us transform into the positive in a beautiful future. So what is happening in the stars that gives this energy window? So this is great. And this is kind of one of my big wheelhouses and I get very excited by this. So Pluto, planet of transformation, of absolute change. Wherever Pluto hits in your chart, think of your natal chart, it's going to transform your life. Pluto moved into Capricorn in 2008. Isn't that interesting? That's when the financial crash started. Pluto in Capricorn, transformation, in money, Capricorn rules big finance, corporations, institutions, um, government debt, government control. Pluto, transformation of all those things. By the time Pluto leaves Capricorn, which is the end of 2024, we will have seen all those institutions crumbled. 
if they haven't crumbled, they're going to be totally reformed, Pluto's reformation. So let's go through them. Just a few, it's all these letter agencies, whether it's the CIA, CDC, the BBC, you know, uh, it, it, all those old institutions were so powerful that we all held so dear. They are being disrupted and they are being alchemized. And most of them will fall. You know, FBI, it, 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 it is what it is. And then... Pluto moves into Aquarius. We're just having a little taste of that right now because of the, um, the what's called the retrograde, retrograde cycle. It's now in Aquarius for a few months, Pluto, and then it will bounce back into Capricorn to finish it off. What is Aquarius? It's belief. In the next 20 plus years, the human story is going to profoundly change because we are going to be forced to question our beliefs. Who are we? Our history. His story. Our story question the narrative and this is when astrology gets goosebumpy because it's just one way in it's just one language and people can go through many different ways i'm i'm not going to ever say astrology is the only language but it always lines up so the high vibration you see of pluto moving into aquarius is basically a total new way in which we believe connection to the galactic heritage our true history the negative would be pluto and the control of our beliefs through artificial intelligence. And that is why we're here today to say, uh-uh, no, AI is a distortion, human intelligence first, because on other planets, so I don't wanna to get too galactic here, but in other timelines, on other galactic uh, life planets, the biology is always primary, meaning the intelligence, which is artificial, always supports that human or humanoid or biological creature. We need to get back and go forward to that. And so when we have a system that supports our biology, biology first, then that artificial intelligence is positive. It has been created in the last hundred years not to do that. That is going to be the big shift. That's an interesting perspective. And, um, you know, in, in my experience, and there are infinite other worlds, let's be honest here, we are we're um we're we're definitely a very very unique species and i think we have something that other worlds who have made and other species who have made that mistake in the past that they have gone the technocratic route and have given up that most innate natural part that spiritual part for the benefits they thought that this technology would bring them whenever they had the chance to communicate with us they were most interested in our uh, in inner inner abilities, most interested in our emotions, in our feelings, in our heart, in love, in the creative process that we have. You're an artist. You know exactly what I speak about here. The greatest threat that we have is really to lose that and lose it almost in an instant, yes. in an exchange. It's like you go online, you type a few words, and an artificial art comes up. It's not art. It's lacking everything that art is. Uh, emotion, creativity, experience, thought, all those things it's lacking. So um, I, I really appreciate your perspective on this. Do you see that we have still a chance to um, create that shift without major conflict, even amongst each other? You know, there's often talk of civil wars. A lot of things that are happening are uh, reminiscent of previous civil wars in countries, you know, the kind of the buildup. How do you think it will play out? Well, firstly, I think the heart is absolutely fascinating. And, you know, certainly the Palladian cultures, and there are many different cultures within the Seven, the seven Sisters and the Pallades, um, are very interested by our human story and our development because Christ did consciousness, Christ light, is 4D, meaning it's operating from the fourth chakra. And for us to ascend, we do have to go through the fourth. We have to go through the heart chakra and ascend upwards to the fifth. We can't just jump through the fifth and the new age movement, you know, and, and it's all very, most of it is very, very high intentional. And, and many things I can, I can say I aspire to similarly, but uh, the heart is primary here because that's what makes us such a unique species because when our heart is pure and like the child is, why do we all love the child? You know, I mean, really the darkness likes the child, but just in a distorted way. Why do we like the child? Because we see not just its innocence, we see its purity and its love, its ability to connect to the divine. We, we, we notice this is subliminal. This is subconscious for most people. We, we stare at it because they are still connected to source. 
And, you know, I mean, we could talk for the next, you know, hour about, about the protocol of the 76 vaccines and what that agenda is about. Of course, it's very obvious once you start putting the jigsaw puzzle together. But the child is so pure and that's very connected to christ consciousness because christ spoke about it you have to become like a child and so the more we can tap into that but we have to have the system to support it because if we do that on our own we get ridiculed so we've created a system very cleverly that has not supported any adult being childlike at all and they have to go into a lunatic asylum where we need to switch it around and allow adults with their creative magic to get back into the poor eternus the eternal child and 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 really sense that inside them because it heals them so the 5d is very very special here because we do have to go through the fourth the fourth chakra in order to go further up and you know we've got to take this slowly we can't just rush it otherwise we'll make the mistake of other planetary systems and go into a sort of an artificial 5d which which will be more technocratic and 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 more um artificially in, in artificially intelligent yeah which is where uh, interestingly enough and a lot of people that have either researched or been part of the new age spiritual community it's a very broad term but um, there are these organizations that a lot of people align themselves with, like, for example, hard math, which a lot of people consider very positive until they realize there's an ultimate goal that is really what they call synthetic Christ consciousness. And we talked about this on this channel. So we are we're also in the age of discernment, which means that oftentimes truth and lie is very, very close to each other. They're very, very, you know, the polarities stick to each other like magnets. And so. Um, part of your calling is uh, being a healer, you know, and in addition to all the other callings, it's being a healer. And part of that healing is also rebalancing body, mind, spirit, um, everything. So you can walk this path that's very narrow right now. It's very um, narrow. So what are what are some of the healing modalities yeah. that, that you appreciate the most that you see have the greatest effect right now? So I, I love frequency and sounds so but one of the things which is so important on this subject is to keep the sounds as close to our biological uh, frequency as possible and less artificial so that again is i'm not going to spend my energy criticizing healing systems that aren't uh, based in the biological i'm just not going to use them so one of the things i'll tell you a story and it will help answer it is where i was a chorister at school and we had church bells and when I was eight, I was sent to a boarding school at seven or eight. And um, one of the beautiful things was, was the chapel. And there were these lovely church bells. And I'd go and stand under them and I'd get my friends. We weren't really allowed to do this, but to hit it. And I'd, stand, and I'd vibrate and I'd get everyone else to copy me. And everyone felt so amazing afterwards. We'd all be fizzing, almost like as if we had taken some super juice. And of course, we now know what that's doing that is increasing our frequency in a way that is almost being forgotten so i do this with with patients they come and lie in front of me and i do hands-on healing i'm basically not healing i'm activating their ability to heal themselves through frequency through god-like christed frequency energy i mean you know rife and Tesla, they've all understood this, that everything has a frequency from a disease to a virus to, to, to love, you know, for, uh, to 432 hertz or, you know, fear at 76 hertz. I mean, it, it, everything has a frequency. So when we can play, manipulate that for the good and allow the human being to become more knowledgeable through wisdom of how to access these sounds and then imp improve their frequency we're going to journey towards ascension really quickly so for me it's always been about sound music frequency yeah which is which is so beautiful for me you know I'm, I'm a songwriter i'm an artist i'm a singer this is and and it is often puzzling to me why it's so challenging for people to see this because it's actually very scientific when something is at a similar vibration it is e you know it's it harmonizes when it is in a, in a certain step above or beyond it, it still harmonizes. But when it is disruptive, you can feel it too. And, and it's very easy. You sing a tone. And if I sing a tone that is disruptive to it, it will hurt us both just listening to it. But if I sing the same tone or a third above, it will, it will sound beautifully. And with healing, it's the same thing. Our bones, our bodies, everything has a frequency. And when, we, when something is out of balance, we can use the, the natural frequency of biology to remind these structures of what yeah. they truly are. And, and so um, I, I'm, I love that F for me, what is beautiful when I, when we have conversations with you is we can have a very practical talk 
about what's happening in the world, what needs to be done on a practical level. And we can drift off into these yeah. deep uh, spiritual energetic discussions and it all connects. It all belongs together. Right. I mean, uh, this is kind of like, you know, when we talk about the reawaken America tour where we met, it's a very oftentimes very 3d kind of thing, but ultimately everything connects right now. And that is so beautiful and, and perhaps, you know, you're traveling the nation right now. Every time we talk, you're somewhere else. And people oftentimes feel alone where they are. They feel isolated. How do you deal with that? What is your advice to those people? Well, in my own humble way, I'm really trying to bring people together. So I travel like almost like a roving ambassador and I'm linking people up. You know, one of my like private telegram channels, I'm just other light workers or people who are doing the work who feel very isolated and trying to link people up. But I also say, hang on in there. We are in this eye of the storm. We are, we're in, we're in the heart of it at the moment. You know, in a way we're in the, in the birth canal and it's not pleasant. I speak for that myself, but we are coming through it. So it's just, you've just got to keep your meditation high, your prayer high, um, your hopes high, but get out there and try and meet people, be brave, be, 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 brave in your curiosity. Um, and obviously through channels like yourself, you know, people can hopefully find each other much more likely. There's a good example of AI working for we the people. You know, whatever the negativity is, this great awakening would not have happened, is not possible without us doing what we're doing now through the Zoom or through FaceTime or whatever it is. In the olden days, you know, the First and Second World War, because we're in the Third World War, it's just a, a different version of, you know, those were all created too. And, and, and we all know what happened. I mean, you know, we're going to have more disclosure in time as to really what, what the agenda was. But now we have the opportunity through communication to, to find each other. So we just have to keep, keep working to do that. It's not easy, but we are finding each other. And when we do, we find each other like us very quickly. Um, I, I have a question for you that I often ask our guests. And, and it's really interesting whether someone comes from a very, let's say, Christian traditional background or whether they're more inclined to a new age spiritual um, practices and, and all that. We oftentimes hear, and this is what they say to us, they say, you know, you should really not talk about any of these things that are happening politically, that are happening. Every, you know, the, the Christian um, mantra is often Leave it to God. God's going to fix it. You know, we just go about our lives and we are the best we can be. And that's it. That's that version. And the second idea is, well, you know, if if you believe in the law of attraction, then only focus on the good and on the beautiful and uh, the, the conspiracies and all that stuff doesn't matter. What is your answer to both of these streams? And do you see it similarly or differently? Oh, um, it's a very interesting one. I, I do believe, ultimately, uh, I believe, uh, I think both have validity. I think freedom is really, for me, so important. So I will always fight, to use that word, I will always champion in the final analysis those who are pushing towards freedom because you can't have security without freedom, in the words of Benjamin Franklin, you only have tyranny. If we can't have freedom we we really can't experience what we're meant to experience. And this is why um, I would say we, we do have to fight for it. Uh, we have to stand up for it. And I think this is the harvest that's on the ones who are going to stand up for it. Their souls are going to be rewarded because they're activated. Their souls are activated within the human flesh. And um, this is part of our planetary upgrade. So I implore all of those sitting on the fence to, to stand up for freedom because when we do it's game over very quickly the the cosmic awakening is 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 going to be expedited the more of us stand up it's going to take much longer when it's it's slower i don't know whether that answers the question but it does it to me and and i believe everyone needs to answer that question for themselves anyways i mean ultimately you know you have to look in the mirror and you have to look within and feel what your particular calling is um, what I will say is there is a um, there is a, a there is a place in our common experience for justice. There is a place for righteousness, and there is a place for healing. And none of these things exist um, separate from each other. They exist together. Hello. Oh, that's a shame. Um, Are you still there? Yeah. I'm sorry, I've just lost you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Sorry. What, what was the last thing you heard? No, I, 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 all good. Uh, 
So, um, you know, there there is such a thing as a place for justice, for righteousness, for healing, forgiveness, but none of these things can happen if truth isn't first lived and shown to all of us, right? The, the danger that I always see is if we simply ignore everything that we perceive as bad, harmful, wrong, destructive, then we also won't see how it came to be. What our part, and what, what, where, did, where were we ignorant in the process? Where didn't we pay attention? Where did we leave it to others so it could unfold the way it did? So I think um, it is very important for us to really on all levels comprehend what has transpired so we can really learn and upgrade, right? This is really um, the journey here. And when we speak about learning and upgrading, that is so much of what you do in everything you do, whether that's through astrology or healing or speaking, uh, whether online or, or in person. And um, w how can people get to know you better, work with you, learn more from you? Uh, how can they get in touch with you? Well, I think the best way is probably through my website, which is georgehlewis.com. Um, or anyone can email me at georgehlewis at me.com. Me um, and I mean, and I love working with people, whether it's with groups or individuals, couples. Um, and I, you know, I'm just on a, on this quest to share this truth because it, it, we are at this amazing juncture in our civilization. And the more we can push towards truth, I mean, my North node is in Sagittarius, so it is the epic quest for me. And of course I honor people, you know, just going back to your last point, I honor people who don't want to be on the front line they're not meant to be and they they do their magic at home in the family and you know some people do both but 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 i i, I and i think when a christian perspective as i consider myself a christian in many ways as well i grew up christian i just have a another interpretation another few layers upon it which also make the galactic very congruent with christianity as like christ consciousness for me that these are uh, similar um, the, but the, but to answer your question, though, the best way probably to get in touch with me will be through the website. Yeah, that is wonderful, George. So it's georgehlewis.com. Yeah. Uh, I know you're currently in North Carolina. So what's what's next on the agenda? Where are you traveling to and uh, what is happening in George's world right now? Well, um, I'm going to be here for a few more weeks. I'm actually doing a, a painting commission of a giant angel for a client here, which is really exciting. Um, I like Beautiful. painting angels. Um, and then I, I will be going down to Georgia. Um, I'll be seeing you in Georgia for an event and then heading to Florida for some speaking engagements and workshops I'll be doing there. And then back to Tennessee where, you know, I'll, be, I'll probably get to see you as well. And then heading up north again. Well, we're, we're, we're counting on it, George. We would be sad if you came through Tennessee and we wouldn't see you. Of course. <laughs> Um, I want to thank you for, for your time, your insight, your love, your knowledge, your wisdom that you shared with us and also extend an open invitation whenever you feel like, you know, you want to share something, uh, please let us know. Come back on. We would love to have you. I know our audience uh, will love to have you. So thank you so much, George, for your time today. Well, it's my absolute pleasure and honor to be on your show. Thank you so much for including me today. Wonderful. Thank you. And Inspire yeah. Tribe. We love you. We appreciate you. We'll be back with you again very, very soon. Would you like to get access to exclusive content as well as being part of a community of like-minded people posting, sharing, and connecting on a deeper level? Come join the Inspired Community on Locals where we share more intimately and privately and do our coffee and truth live streams as well as our Honey Talks show, the only inspired show with Christine Nolan. The Inspired Community is absolutely uncensored and unfiltered, a place for truth, authenticity, and freedom. Join us now at inspired.locals.com or click on a link in the video description.